So I'm upgrading the 3D printer and I'm making a new base. The base is going to be 540 millimeters long and 400 millimeters wide or 399.98 millimeters wide because that's the shortest one of these two. The other one being 400.01. To join these aluminium extrusions there's a number of ways, but they come with two 5.5mm holes in this particular size. And I want to do a butt joint like that. So these will need two holes drilled in there, and two holes drilled in there. In exactly the same place, or exactly the same distance from the edge. And another two there. Another two there, so there'll be 10 mil, 30 mil, 10 mil, 30 mil from the edge, and exactly on that scribe centre line there. I'm going to use the milling machine because it's easier. So I could spend a lot of time winding handles, or alternatively, I'm going to use the 123 blocks. To enable me to use the 123 blocks, I have a box of bits for the little mini mill, and that length seems to go through quite nicely. So, this is the setup that I'm going to use to make a stop. That way, I can do repeated holes without doing tool changes on every part really accurately, it says. In the kit of bits, I have bought a set of flange nuts. These are M6 flange nuts and I've made extra thick washers. I may nudge you at some point. So I'm going to be drawing two holes in the first run of those two runs. And I want this about level. In fact I want it exactly level. The other thing is I need enough sticking out of the vise here but I can do the first, the, both the holes without drilling into the vise. I've already said the, the holes are 10mm and 30mm in. So if I put a mark on the outside there, I'll have an idea what I'm doing. So that one's 10mm. And that one is 30 mil in. I don't know if you can see them, probably not, maybe. You can see what sort of doing that anyway. So now I know that I'm definitely about to drill that hole. And it's definitely going to be clear. But what will happen is it's going to be too far out so when I press down here there's a good chance that I press so hard and it will lift up so like I said I want it a bit further in I only want it in as far as I need, out as far as I need to be out so we'll press that into the vise if I drill that now I'm definitely not going to be drilling into the vise so we can move the one two three block in there and in fact we're not well, that's alright, I can leave it there, that's fine. So I'm going to press the 1, 2, 3 block down and into the edge of the item and I'm going to nip it up. So I had a bit trapped underneath it but now it is solid. The next step will be to use the edge finder 
find the edge of this here take off the 200 thousandths because that's what mine is, mine is an imperial uh, edge finder, I couldn't find a metric one take off the 200 thousandths and then move it all the way across to the 30 millimeter mark then come out to the edge here take the edge come in half of the 200 thousandths and then go in the 10 millimeters and then I'll be lined up on that first hole and I can drill that hole flip the bar over drill the same hole in the other side and then do the same to the other bar there'll be four holes then instead of moving the whole setup again I can leave the drill where it is I can just loosen off the bar put the drill put the handle in a different position loosen off the bar oh man they've just come to pieces they were so good together And then use a 20mm gauge block stack. So we'll loosen off the bar again. Put the 20mm gauge block stack in there. And then we tighten the vice back up again. Maybe it'll stay in, maybe it won't. Or if it stays in, it stays in. That's fine. And then I can just drill the same four holes, but obviously 20mm apart. There. Then I can do the tool change. Pop the 6.2 millimeter drill, which I'm going to use through. Then I can do another tool change and put in the countersink tool for cap head screws, M6 cap head screws, and then set the depth on the first one, and then do the rest of them using the same methods. So we have the edge finder. I've got a DTI gauge set up in I hope the right configuration I have done the conversion from 30 millimeters to Imperial and that is 1 inch 181 thousandths half the diameter of that is 100 so we'll take 100 Thou off of that because when I go into the one, two, three block, it will need to go another hundred thousandths to be right on the edge. So that means it'll be one hundred thousandths into the meat of the metal. So I need to subtract that when I move into the meat of the metal. So I'll be moving in one inch and eighty one thousandths exactly. So let's do that. Here we go. Run the So I don't know if you could see that kick out, probably, probably not. But now we have a zero on my gauge here. Set up a zero. About half a thou out, a quarter of a thou out. So now I need to wind the table this way. One inch and eighty-one thousandths. And we're at we're just in between the one and the two. So I've got to remember that. So we'll come out this way and we'll be coming out to between the one and the two. And then another 81 thousandths from there. quarter of a thou over. So does that look right? I'm just going to check that out. I'm going to be behind the camera to see that. It looks bang on. Okay. So now when I put the 20 millimeter gauge block in there it's going to push the bar 20 millimeters that way so I'd better do the 30 millimeter and the 20 millimeter hole. So I'm happy with that. I'll just insert the Allen key down here and I'm putting the lock stop on for the x-axis. 
And I've locked that and it's moved. So we'll just bring it back to the 81 thou. And we'll lock it. And it's moved again. There. Locked. So that's that locked. Quite happy with that. We'll take the two inch travel gauge off that side, loosen up its stop. Now I need to go down a little bit further, so we'll bring the head down a bit further on the micro adjust. That shall be enough. Start the machine running again. Okay, we've got two zeros. Happy with that. So I'm just winding the head back up again. And this time I've got to add one hundred thousandths to the to the figure. And the figure will be six eight seven five for twenty millimeters, so I've got to do it again. So I'm just going to work out what that figure is using my gauge. We'll go into millimetres, we've got to go in 10 millimetres, so hopefully this will be quick. Sometimes this can be a bit fiddly, but it does give you an accurate conversion. Like, oh, I knew it was going to go past 10, you just knew it was going to be stick slipping like that. 10 mil is going to be 393.5. 393.5. So it's going to be 4935 to go across. I don't forget it. 4935.5. Yeah, that's going to be 4935.5. And we'll move across to 4935.5. Right, so we need to look down here. We've we got enough left on this. I think so. We are above the 1.1 and just below the 1.2. So. Uh, 100, 200, 300, 400, um, 93.5, 90, 1, 2, 3, and a bit. Did I look in the centre? That looks exactly in the centre of that line. And I'll show you what line I mean. Get this in tight. So in these sections here, you can see in the centre of the sections, they've got that line scored all the way down them and it looks bang on in the centre, so I'm quite happy with that. So I've installed a carbide, it's a bit stiffer, um, but obviously got the problematic bits of it being carbide. And I'll just give you a close up of, you know, I get a bit wobbly here. A bit of a close-up of what it actually looks like. It's in the slot. Let's have a look. So we can find the slot. There you go. So it looks pretty dang close to me. So I'll go through and I think I'll just jump through these in one of those rapid video moments with all eight with rapid movement.
exciting. <laughs> so like I was saying, that was exciting. Uh, next. Comes out, yep. Very exciting indeed. <clears throat> Don't have got a piece on there, I have. Get out. Get out of it, I say. We really need to set the compressor up because that would make that so much easier. Just getting all that chip out of the way. So I was just wiping some chips off here while I was holding it. And my goggles are off now. Put your goggles back on again. A bit more slippy stuff. This side it made less 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 pro protesting less protesting. So the temptation now is to put the countersinking bit in, which is this bit here, which I've never used yet for this size. So that counter sinks for the cap screws for that, but I'm going to set this depth up on these and do that last. So I think you've seen what I'm doing now. I'll do the rest of these holes and then I'll show you the trick for doing the counter sinks because clearly you can't do the counter sink back to front, can you? I'm flipping these back to front at the moment. Now I have the countersink bit in and it should be around about the same kind of diameter as this bolt head and it looks it, that's an M6 bolt so what I've decided to do here is I've locked let's come out a bit so I've wound down the micro adjust and you can see there's no gap here in the head it's at full extent so now I'm just going to wind the head down until the blades are just shaving the Ujima fluges. Lubrication, oh, we're winding down. So this should just go straight in. In fact, I'm going to put some tension on the It's hard to wind down, we'll just put some tension on it. And that should go in the holes now. Yeah, no problem, that's supported. That's made a nice flat base right at the bottom right now. So theoretically, I should now be able to put the gauge block in and do the second one. Crisis averted. Maybe. Oh man. This isn't going according to plan, this ain't. It is in, so now I should just go to full depth and that should be the perfect cut. Right, I'll do that two more times on the other bar and then I'll show you how I adjust for the other holes to be exactly the same. 
So now I have two bars which look like that. This side's complete. It will basically take the M6 bolt and everything's looking hunky dory. It's about flush at the front there. Could do with a slightly longer bolt, but that's sort of the story. Now to drill the other holes on the other side, all I did was just flip it over. But clearly then, if I try to countersink on this side, it's not going to be quite common, is it? Because I want all the countersinks on the same side. If I'm making a box. If I was making a Z-shaped thing, <laughs> then it wouldn't matter. I could do that. But I'm not. I'm trying to make a box. So now I've got to get these underneath the cutter in some kind of organisation. And that will require using a proper hand key. So we'll unlock it, and that should move it a little bit. Oh, it hasn't. And we'll move it across 20 millimetres. And 20 millimetres is. somewhere right about there. Seven eight seven five, yeah. Seven eight seven five. Seven eight seven five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, eight, five, eight, six, eight, seven, five. There. Lock that up. Make sure she doesn't move when I'm locking it up. Oh, man, it's coming out. Oh. Really need to get these locks sorted out on this. That it move, that should be bang on. And of course, it is bang on. So that's how I do it on this machine. Everything's manual, you can use the dials if you want. Short movements, why not just use a long reach dial indicator. So now I can do that hole. a little bit, push that away, lock it back up again, make sure there's no chips on it, make sure there's no chips on here, which there was, twenty millimeter gauge block stack again, make sure she fits in, she does, slacken her off, Of course it is, so I'll do the other one and then they'll all be done. So I've cleared a bit of space and I have just finished snapping these two in the device. So there's going to be some swarf in them. See if the bolts fit. Of course they're not going to fit, I'll do the two. Okay. Quite often I'll just put all the tapping equipment away. <laughs> Go and check it and then realise I've got to stick a second tap down it just to clean all the threads up because I've pulled the 
and the threads out. So nothing too fancy here. Just want to see if it goes together. Just get all the chips off the end. Fit up. Oh, and of course, I haven't got eight bumps, and I've only got four because I weren't thinking. Anyway. Together. I'm sure we'll get four more bolts. So this is one of those typical moments. I've only got three more bolts. No M5s everywhere, no M6s. I've got M6 button head, it won't fit. And I'll have to do three, three bolts left to do. Yeah, I can't find any. I've got all the right size bolts this anyway, so not too fussed. So we'll have to do another bit of star spangled effort to get this right. too far and I'm not even adjusting that I don't know if you can see that and it's gone straight in so we'll tighten all those up obviously I've not squared the frame up with a bit of adjustment in it so they're all tight I'm just going to take this bolt out of this side here yeah you can see that and we'll put that into this one here and yeah straight in so all eight bolts line up just going to show you what one of these can do on the Miller machine. In, com in combination with one of those. This engineer square is, although it is an engineer square, I'm not sure if it's turned out square or not. <laughs> I can't see it because I'm trying to show you at the same time. I don't know what you reckon. I'll go have a look myself now. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. <laughs> I've just bolted that together in front of your eyes, you just saw it happen. So that's not bad, I'm quite happy with that. Get out on your little mini mill and make a big frame. Well that's basically a frame for a 3D printer. I know looking down the edge here there's this, this 
lip here, you're thinking, oh, that's not what the original one was like. The original one was 20 by 20 ends here. didn't have these 40 by 40 ends. Ah, but I'm upgrading my printer. <laughs> that's the whole idea of making a new frame. So, when the 3D printer's done, which will be not long, I will show you why I've made the steps. But that's not the object of this video. The object of this video was just to show you using the mini mill to make a square frame and doing precise holes. Although I'm not sure if I showed you making it to length, but that was just tramming the vise in, basically making sure the vise was trammed in. Right. Enjoy. I'm on to my next project now, and I may or may not record it, depending on how interesting it is. But it won't be long until I'm moving the two of the machines down the back here, and then screening the floor, or levelling the floor. And at some point I'll be making the same bottom table as this, taking them outside, which is behind you there, behind that door that you're standing in front of, and I'll be welding up the roof trusses for this garage and putting the new roof on. So this is a little footnote at the end here. These are the linear rails that are going to replace the centre 40 by 20 rail here with the rollers sitting on it. So these are going to have linear bearings on them. There's going to be one down that side and one down that side. And I'm going to modify this centre rail which holds the stepper motor for the Y axis. So it sits inside the cross beam at the front which I've just drilled the holes in. Now I'm just looking at it and I've just realised that I need to drill two more holes to hold the Z axis vertical Z axis rails each side. I need to do that in the 500mm long bits here. So here we are back at the Miller machine and this is the block that I had set up which is exactly 30 millimeters from the X location that I was drilling the holes. So the aluminium extrusion put up against it and I knew it was 30 mils away and then to make one 10 mils away I had a 20 mil gauge box stack which pushed the aluminium extrusion a further 20 millimeters in allowing me to drill that with a whole 10 millimeters since as I know that, and I also know that the edge of the Z-axis upright is 19.5mm from the back, I know the centre of that will be 20.5, sorry, centimetres, 20.5 centimetres. So I took 30 off of that and I came up with 17.5 centimetres. I've converted that into millimetres, 17.5 millimetres. And then I've done that into inches, 689 thousandths. I'll move the decimal place one, so that's 6 inches, 890 thousandths. So I've now got a stack of gauge blocks, 6 inches, 890 thousandths, which is 30 mil shorter than I require to get the hole in the centre. But remember, this is also 30 centimetres away. Oh my word. 30 millimeters. I'm getting all all het up here. So I want it 20 20 millimeters from the end, and it is 20 centimeters from the end. And it won't be with this setup. So I need to make a new gauge block setup. I think you realise <laughs> what I'm doing here. But I've just made a 60 millimeter error in judgment. So I've got to make a new gauge block set up because that will be nowhere near. Let's just have a look with the roller. I'm aiming for 20.5. I'm going to get 14.5. Try our best not do that, it A. Eh? But you get the idea what I'm doing there. You get the idea. Good job I double checked this because I was just about to lock that down. I would have drilled it. It's a good thing about making videos. It makes you stop, talk through what you're doing, and realise your mistake. I'm not sure if I made that clear. After I've got this one positioned, then I can remove that one. At that point, I can put the aluminium extrusions in 
butt them up to this one two three block and then drill all my holes here doing the flip side to side and then I can do the counter bore on this one and after I've done the two counter bores that I can do then I can then bring the vise this way 10 millimeters or to 20 millimeters again back to where it initially started off at and then do the last two counter bores and that'll be it all the counter bores will be done <sighs> Just making that clear but you've seen all that anyway once the only thing you didn't see was the reposition of the blocks without doing any more movements of the X movements I'm going to, have to do one more Y movement and that is it so the the chance for error has been down to two Y movements and me making sure there's no chips up against those stops and in the one with the vice every single time that's that's all the all the errors that can come in chips and two movements and that's how you can get things really accurate <sighs>